Hi, Chatter with Purple Car Life. Today's project, washing the camper or washing the RV. In this case, we have a 2011 Chaparral, Coachman Chaparral, fifth wheel. And we've owned this now for 10 years. Before that, we had another camper. Before that, I had another camper. So I've washed my share of campers, and it's never an easy task. You know, especially on these fiberglass sided campers, those black lines come down over and they're hard to get off from the, from the rubber roof just from the acid and the other materials in the rain as it falls in Northwest Pennsylvania. Now I will say the fiberglass is much easier to clean than the aluminum. And let me talk to you about what I've tried in the past. Like I said, I've used a number of different products to wash campers. I've used car wash. It works okay. It does give it a nice shine, but it doesn't take the black streaks off. I've used a number of different hoses. Number one tip for you right now, get a zero G hose. It doesn't kink. It doesn't tangle up. We're not sponsored by Zero G, but I do like it the best of all hoses I've ever used. I'll put an Amazon link down below to any of these products I mentioned that are available on Amazon. I know the Zero G hoses are available because I just bought two of them on Amazon about a month ago. Second thing is a good sprayer. You need to be able to spray with some good force at the camper. Now probably a pressure washer with light pressure would be best. So comment down below if you think Jennifer should allow Chad to get a pressure washer to make washing cars, camper, the porch, the sidewalk easier. Really appreciate that help. Now a number of years ago, I got turned on to a new product. Totally awesome. LA is totally awesome. Available at the dollar store for a dollar a bottle. Now this is concentrated. You can mix it with water to make a soap. And it does remove the black streaks, but a downside to it. I would, not recommending, I would not recommend using this on a camper or a car. It actually takes the finish, the nice gel coat, glossy finish off of a vehicle and off of a camper. So while it does remove the black streaks, it also removes the finish. I would not recommend using this. So to date, with nearly 25 years of camping experience and washing campers, this is what I've found that works the best. This is the Campco Pro Strength Wash and Wax RV Wash. It's concentrated. You put it into a bucket of water, wax to get a clean finish and hand polished look without buffing. And this brush came with it as a set. I'll see if I can find a link for these. The brush is extendable, which is really nice for reaching those high up places. But even with that, you connect the hose here and you've got flow control on this handle. No matter what you do, you're probably gonna get soaked when you're washing an RV. A lot of it's above your head. You're scrubbing with sponges or even with this wand. All the water seems to roll right back your arm, down your armpit and down your side. So prepare to get wet no matter what you're doing when you're washing an RV. This year, we're gonna try something a little different. Jennifer's got her Norwex mop and a cloth. And we're gonna try with no soap to see how the Norwex does washing the camper. If it works great, then we won't have to worry about stocking the wash and wax from Camco or using this brush anymore. I'm hoping it's an easier system. If not, we know we can always go back to this. Okay, we'll get started with the Norwex products. I'll show you what we're using as we use them. Just a quick shout out to KYD, keep your daydream. We are both wearing KYD shirts today for our RV wash. Here we've got a bucket of plain water that we'll be using, a Norwex scrub mitt, and a wet mop. And just to note, I would recommend not setting those on something like a sidewalk. If there's any particles of stone in them, they will pick up and could scratch your surface.
can see the dirt coming off as we use the mop. You can twist it sideways to get along the edges. There will still be some areas you'll have to get with a sponge, like right there. Well, we can get that with the mitt. It's, that's what I meant, with the mitt. And it looks like it takes some of the black off, but it doesn't take it all off from what we can see, but the black's really hard to get off with any product. And this is just water. Here's the after washing this first side. You can see that black line is still underneath the light. That's there most of the time. It comes a little bit better with that Camco product I showed earlier, but pretty impressed with what the Norwex did. You can see the side looks pretty clean here. A couple black stripes underneath the vent from the up from the stove top. The vent from the stove top. But the rest of I think the front and the back are the most difficult, but the front by far, because of the bend in it, and you can see all those black streaks all the way down onto the hitch, really difficult to wash that part. So I do it last. Maybe I should do it first, but I always seem to manage to wait to do that last. We'll get started here on the other side of the camper. You can see this side, the graphics are starting to peel off because the camper sits right there beside the garage throughout the winter. And the sun still hits this side of the camper while the other side is protected by the garage. You can see the significant difference that makes. The sun always hitting this side, it's pulling those letters off, the chaparral light by Coachman, and then the graphic of the mountains there below it. It's a hot one here in Northwest Pennsylvania. I don't like the heat. Anything above 80 is too hot for me. It is currently 84 degrees out and I'm feeling the heat and the humidity. I've always said I could live no further south than Northwest Pennsylvania. It's just too hot. I'd rather move north, kind of like something like the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, Alaska. That's the kind of heat that I like where it's not quite this hot and I like the cold.
section's looking quite a bit better. Made our way back across the slide. It looks way better. Got this back panel yet to do. And then we'll worry about the back and the front. So I said before, the most difficult part is the nose cone of the fifth wheel. It's hard to get to, you've got to stand in the bed to clean it. And it gets the most dirty because it hits all the bugs when you're driving. Uh, it's in the sunshine all the time and it gets all the rain streaks on it. So we're gonna work on that now. I'll show you what it looks like after we're done. The front of the camper looks so much better. Like I said, that's the hardest part to clean. It's the dirtiest part, gets all the bugs on it. And even this area down by the hitch gets filthy. You can see it's bright and shiny and clean white. All and just all just with water and the Norwex mop. It did a great job. Jennifer's using that Norwex mop on the inside of the awning. She says it's working better than the other things we've tried in the past. It does still drip all over you. Not like the old system, the ladder and... Yeah, we used to have to stand on a ladder, do it mostly by hand. So this does work better than that. You can see the white stuff that drops off of the camper got all over the side of the truck. So my next step is to wash the truck while Jennifer finishes up here. If you like videos like this, make sure you give us a thumbs up down below. We'd really appreciate it comment on what systems you use to clean your RV, share with your friends, and we'll see you again the next time. Final results, camper looks great. Look at the awning, hasn't been that clean in a long time. And then we did the truck. Nice rig and set up. Not bad for a 2005 F-350 that we've owned since new and a 2011 fifth wheel that we've owned since new.